How's it going and welcome back to another video. You may be wondering, why is my head kind of squished? You see that? It's kind of weird. That's because I'm using a brand new 50mm anamorphic lens by a company called Siri. S it's spelled like this right here. Not exactly sure how to pronounce it. But before we go any further, let's go ahead and fix this. Let's see. Okay, that's better. So let's jump into it. Siri is a camera gear manufacturer. They make just a few products right now. But today we're going to focus on their brand new, not yet released, 50 millimeter anamorphic lens. It's a 50 millimeter 1.8 and it's anamorphic, which is why my head was squished at the beginning of this video. But for those of you who don't know what anamorphic lenses mean, let's touch on that real quick as fast as possible. So when audio was first being recorded with video, they needed a place to store the audio, recording it alongside the video. So on the same piece of film that the image was being shot on, they would cram the audio right next to it vertically along the image. This made for a smaller area to record video to, and the square aspect ratio really wouldn't catch on until Instagram came around. So in order to get the same field of view onto the now smaller film, they utilized anamorphic optics that had actually previously been used to give submarine crew members a wider field of view through their periscopes. The design of these optics squeezed the image horizontally while leaving the vertical field of view the same, and they were designed to squeeze it a very specific amount in order to easily and accurately unsqueeze it in post-production or while projecting it. So what does that mean for modern filmmaking on digital cameras? Well, it means you get a wider horizontal field of view for a given focal length. So instead of getting a 50 millimeter focal length field of view with this lens, you may actually get something wider, which makes for a pretty interesting look and have a different aspect ratio altogether. It gives your footage the letterbox black bars on the top and bottom that has come to be associated with cinematic footage. So basically, this lens will automatically take your footage to the Hollywood level, but actually no. However, it is still a pretty cool and unique lens, and what makes it stand out even more is its price. Anamorphic lenses are known to be very expensive, and even the cheap ones being out of reach for almost everybody. However, the Siri lens will only set you back about $600 on their Indiegogo page, which they are running a promotion for on this lens right now. The retail price will be close to $700, but that's always subject to change. Be sure to check out the Indiegogo in the description down below and also check out their other website for other products that they offer. So now that you have an idea of what makes this lens unique, let's check it out by comparing it to the completely not unique Sony 50mm f1.8. Now this is technically an identical focal length and aperture, f1.8, f1.8, 50mm, 50mm, but it makes for quite a difference in the end result. So let's check out some side-by-side -side video as well as some images to see the difference in sharpness. So right away, it's apparent with the overall field of view. You can see a lot more in the scene, which can give you a little bit more context as to a given shot, which can sometimes be critical to visual storytelling. But it can certainly be achieved with a wider angle lens, but a wider angle lens means you sacrifice some depth of field, and in that, a little bit of subject separation. So is there any sacrifice with using a anamorphic lens compared to a regular 50 millimeter? Let's find out. So checking out these pictures here, it definitely looks like you do sacrifice a little bit of background blur when shooting with this specific anamorphic lens. Here are these images are f1.8, f2.8, and f4. And there is less background blur. I'm not sure if that's typical of all anamorphic lenses or just this one specifically. And that's part of the reason that it ended up being so cheap. Even after you stretch back out the footage and correct the aspect ratio, you still end up with these nice little bokeh balls that are oblong in the background which is another signature look for anamorphic lenses. So some filmmakers desire that look because it's the more cinematic look. Eh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. You really have to be looking for it in order to even see it in high-end production movies. So one thing to note during this test is that our subject was actually minimum focus for the Siri lens. Uh, and that's minimum focus was to the tune of about four feet. Meanwhile, the Sony 50 millimeter full frame had a much shorter focusing distance. This may not really be an issue for most people shooting video because even with this long minimum focus, you still had plenty of room to fit somebody's entire face in frame like this. Let's see here. All right, this is minimum focus. Do you need any closer than this? Maybe. 
but I think it'll be adequate for most things. So while we're looking at these pictures, let's go ahead and check out the sharpness between these two lenses. You can see here that they're both shot at f1.8. Neither of them are spectacular, but the anamorphic seems to fall behind. There's some smearing both horizontally on his eyes, which may be a result of the correcting in, of the aspect ratio. And there's also smearing on his arm, which looks like motion blur. But both of these images were shot with a remote shutter, so I really doubt that that's the case. Moving on to f2.8, it's more of the same story, but at this aperture, the Sony lens seems to pull ahead in raw sharpness, but I do think the Siri has more vibrant colors, if only by a touch. Finally, at f4, the Sony pulls ahead a bit further, and the anamorphic leaves something to be desired, even at f4. I mean, it's f4, that's pretty dark. So that was a little close up and personal for the Siri. Let's move a little bit further away from the camera. However, this story seems to stay the same. At f1.8, the Siri looks pretty good, showing a little better contrast than the Sony and maybe a little bit more vibrant color still, but it's still being beaten in sharpness. At f2.8, this sharpens up a little bit, but the Sony stays just ahead of it. And on to f4, the story stays about the same again. It just can't quite catch up with the Sony for sharpness. So this lens is designed specifically for APS-C size sensors. You can put it onto a full frame body, I mean, feel free to do that, but I took some photos and video examples of how harsh the vignetting is. Yeah, you can come in. Guess who's down at the curb? Taking the trash bags. Why are you so right bad? <sighs> this is what it's like with him all day long, and it makes me just like. We got a new puppy. He's a hellion. I'm leaving, by the way, so. All right, bye. All right, moving on. One thing that you can't ignore when showing off an anamorphic lens is the signature lens flare that comes with the anamorphic design. Uh, again, it's one of those staple things that you see in so many big budget movies, especially action movies where they really make use of it, or sci-fi movies where it adds kind of an eerie effect to it, especially if it's nighttime, headlights kind of deal. There's a very distinct horizontal line that's produced when panning across or tilting up and down over bright points of light just like you're seeing in this video footage here. It's kind of neat looking, and there's a lot of post-processing effects that can do similar things, but of course, if you can get it done in the camera, you might as well. Overall, the design of this lens is really nice, being made entirely out of aluminum, alludes to the potential durability throughout its lifetime. However, this does make for a heavier lens than expected when you pick it up, because it's still kind of small and compact, but boy, is it heavy. In fact, so heavy, it's triple the weight of the Sony. So you'll certainly feel it when you mount it up onto your camera. One thing I do wish they had done differently is that because this is almost exclusively a video lens, because taking pictures with this is kind of weird. Anyways, I wish they had put uh, some focus gears on it because, I mean, it's a very video focused lens. Put some focus gears on it, but that may have added to the price and they were trying to keep it at a certain price point. So in conclusion, this lens certainly has some shortcoming, being the sharpness, the weight, the lack of the gears on the body, but it's six times less expensive than the next closest competitor, and it makes for some, I think, better looking video in compared to a conventional 50 millimeter lens. So I think this is gonna spark some interest of filmmakers and everybody out there who's running on a budget. I'm running on a budget. You're probably running on a budget. Everybody's got a budget. And this is a cool lens to be able to branch out and get some of those anamorphic style shots. As a reminder, don't forget to check out Siri's Indiegogo campaign down in the description. And you can grab this lens for $100 under retail. And also check out their website for some additional products. The links will be in the description. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.